Morning. Today, I am going to have a look at lens compression. So good morning and welcome to today's video. Richard here and it's good to have you back again. Today I'm going to have a quick look at lens compression which um, shows the difference on your subject in the background depending on what focal length you're at. So we're going to take some pictures at 24mm all the way out to 400mm um, and I'm going to go through a few pictures and show you how much of a difference the situation of the backdrop looks compared to where your subject is. So I'm going to keep the subject in the same place and I'm going to go through the range of all those focal lengths and we'll see the um, how the background changes, what impact it can have on your photos when you're out in the field and you're thinking of, of what sort of photos you want to capture and what sort of effects you want to you want to give your photos. So I've always sort of known about what lens compression was but never really um, investigated it a great deal. Um, I knew that it did have an impact on the pictures, how the picture looked, but let's look at some examples. Have a look at these two photos here. The first one is taken at 24 mil. It's my little boy. And he is, both these photos, I'm gonna show you a range of photos, but both of these photos you're about to see now, he's at the, he's standing in exactly the same place. So just keep an eye on the background. You can see the shed, you can see the, the battered playhouse, it's winter, it's leaves everywhere, it's dirty, it's a winter garden. Um, you can see the trampoline, how far away the trampoline looks. Now he is standing in exactly the same place. I'm gonna move away from him. As I move away, I'm gonna zoom in. And I will go through the ranges. I'll go, let's look at the 400 one. Look at the difference between this photo here of the 24 mil and this photo here of the 400. He's standing in the same place. The trampoline isn't moving, the shed isn't moving. The only thing that's moving is me, but to compensate for me moving, I'm changing the focal, I'm zooming in. So I have this, the, the 24 and I'm standing real close to him. And then I'm gonna walk to the other end of the garden virtually. And this is a 400 mil. Look how much closer the trampoline is. You can't see the shed now. Um, nothing's moved apart from me and my focal length. So you can see there what such a difference that, that just moving back 30 yards, I can't know what it was, 20 yards, 30 yards. Now I'm gonna go through that again in the office here with a little setup that I've done. I won't be able to go to 400 because my office isn't 30 meters long. Um, which it was, that'd be cool. Um, but I'm gonna to go to like as far as I can. So I'm gonna start at 24 and I'm gonna keep moving back um, and I'll go back as far as I can. I don't know what I'm gonna be able to get to, maybe 200, I'm not sure, 150, we'll see. Um, all the settings are the same. I did have to change the, um, I didn't change the aperture, I changed the ISO outside. I'm not bothered about the image quality on this. It's just because I wanted to keep the same aperture to make the background, so I didn't want to affect the background. I wanted the 24 mil to be the same aperture as a 400 mil basically, so there was no manipulation of the background by doing a shallower depth of field or anything like that. Um, so we're gonna have a look at that in a second here in the office. Uh, so I did obviously have to change lenses. The first photo was a 24 mil that was on my 24 to 70 and I used that for the, I think I took three photos, 24, 35, 50 and maybe 70, so maybe four photos. Then I went to my 100 to 400 and jumped up to 100 mil and went 100, 135, 2, 3 and 400 I think, I can't remember, something like that. The numbers I'll put on the bottom of the pictures. Um, Now, I think there is some kind of mathematical formula to this, and it, it, it relates on how how close you are to your subject and then how close the background is and and things like that. Um, so the, I don't, I, I'm not interested in mathematical. I just want to understand that when I do this, this will happen. Google mathematical formulas for lens compression if you want to. Um, Okay, so we're going to have a little look in the office now. Um, I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to record or show you recording, but you'll certainly see as much as I can show you. I may pick this camera up and do some handheld stuff, so it's going to be, God knows what the lighting's going to be like or anything like that, but bear with me and, you know, it's not Hollywood. Okay, so I'm here now in the office. Um, apologies in advance if this, this is all handheld, so 
if it go focusing goes a bit funny and the um, exposure goes a bit funny, I apologise. But basically, and the volume, because I've just got a mic on top here, so wish you luck. Um, so basically, what I've got here is my camera shooting this lens here. Okay, now I'm also going to try and record. So this is what my camera is seeing. I'm also going to try and record what my camera is doing. So I'm basically trying to keep the um, so the top of the lens. I'm trying to keep. Sorry, this I've got the grid on so that you can see. Um, it's going to help me just keep the, the, the lens in the same place. So I'm going to try and keep the top of the lens on this line here all the time. So that's going to be the um, that's going to be the uh, the consistent thing. So we are here now. We are going to take a photo, and that is at. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but that's a 24 mil. So I'm going to, this is going to be really, really hard to do, which is the fun of, of videoing on my own, but I'm basically going to change now the focal length to, let's go to 35. And I'm just going to have to put the camera down while I move this back. So again, I'm keeping the keeping the top of the lens here look, on this white line on this black grid line and now I'm going to go to 50 but of course I am going to be moving this back so that we are in the same place again And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to go to 70 now. And I'm going to move it back. And you will see, I'll try and show you actually. I've really got no idea if this is kind of what I'm saying is coming out, but let's focus again. And let's probably. Try and, it's so hard to keep it in the same place, but something like that is close enough, I think, for this. Now let's have a quick look at the background already. We've got, look at the difference. The lens is kind of, not really getting much bigger. Certainly compared to the, I'm gonna put these lines on the screen here so you can see the difference that it makes. The lens is kind of staying in the same place, but might be moving slightly. Let's carry on. So the screen will probably go off now. We'll just I'm going to quickly change lenses. So I will be right back. Okay, so it's almost there. But as you can see, so we're now on the so we're now on the 100 to 400 lens um, at 100. The previous one was 700. You can see that we're still just trying to get the top of the lens in on this line here. And we're going to keep going back, so I'm going to change it now to, let's just go up in hundreds now. Okay, so that was trickier than I thought to get the lens in the same place each time, but I've tried to keep the top and the bottom of the lens in the same place. And you can see how much, you should be able to see how much closer the box and the lens cap was getting to the lens or how it appeared to get closer. So we're going to have a look at those now in the computer just to go through the shots I've taken. So I'm just going to sort this mess out and then we'll be back. Okay, so that was um, that was pretty straightforward. I, like I said, I took the picture you saw, I took the photo, moved the tripod back, took another photo after I zoomed in, moved it back. I got things got in the way and it wasn't as smooth as I wanted, but um, I've done it. Um, I didn't. One thing I didn't do, I noticed at the end, is I didn't drag it back in a straight line. I ended up going a bit wonky, but we've got enough here to to prove a point, I guess. So let's have a quick look. 
Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Uh, we've got the pictures that I took outside and the pictures that I took, I've just taken in here. Um, I've tried to line them up a little bit um, in the crop feature, um, uh, just just to try and get the lens right in the center because I didn't drag it back ideally. It's not gonna affect things. You're still gonna see the background kind of warp out. Um, let's go through it. So you can see up in the top left hand corner here, this is 24 millimeters and you can see that the lens cap is just behind the lens here and so is the bottle, um, the box here. And you can kind of make it out. It's um, they're not perfectly clear because I am at 2.8, but um, do I stay at 2.8? I think I stay at 2.8. I can't stay at 2.8 because I go up to the bigger lens. Um, so I do change it to f8 after the first shot. So, oh no, it is it f8? Sorry, the lens is too, it's at f8. So they're f8 all the way through, hopefully. Um, forget what I just said. Uh, okay, so here we are. Um, F8 at 24 mil, and like I say, you can just see the lens cap is going behind the lens here, and the bottle is not quite um, bottle box is slightly behind the lens as well. Because I didn't drag it back perfectly straight, the bottle does stay behind the lens longer than it should. But you'll see the lens cap move out a lot quicker, and eventually I realise what I've done, and I correct it. So, so just as a bit of an afterthought, I've just added this blue square in so that you can see that generally speaking, the lens stays the same size and it uh, it stays in that box so that's really there added in the edit just so you can see that nothing's changing with the size of the lens in to any great degree anyway this is now at 34 and you can now see all of the lens cap um, so you can see that's come round the um, the back we now go up to 50 mil and the box is stayed out you can kind of see that the lens is staying the same size. It is moving slightly, but it is generally the same size in the frame. Um, that's at 50. We've now gone to 70, and you can see there now that the lens cap has, has jumped around quite a lot, that, and even the box has now come out from around the back. Uh, and the back just kind of gets closer and closer, and as a result of that, uh, the, the things will almost come round the side of the lens itself. Uh, and look at this one now. So we've gone now for a big jump from 70 up to 200. Um, and you can see that the lens is still pretty much the same size, but look how much of the box you can't see now. If we go back to the 24 mil, there's loads of the box. You can see all of the box. If we now go back to the, which one was the 200, uh, this one. If we go to the 200, the, the box is, hasn't moved physically, but look how much of it is now out of the frame and how much of the lens cap you can see. It's also got a lot softer um, so it's not as in focus now and that again is, is got something to do with the compression and there we have a 263 again we lose a little bit more of the um, of the box up here and gain a tiny tiny bit more of the um, of the lens cap here there's a bigger gap as you can see between these two here now well, if you go to the pictures outside the I couldn't go back further than 263 because I'd have been in the front garden. Um, and obviously the subjects in here, the, the subjects in the background are already quite close to the lens. So may, maybe the effect isn't as dramatic. If we have a look at the pictures I've taken of Max in the garden, let's just make a note of what we can see. We can see this pillar down here and we can see this, the swing set here. Now, like I said, winter garden, ignore the garden, we're not gardeners. Um, but as we scroll through, this is so this is at 24, so this is at 34, the swing's gone, the max has stayed pretty much the same, the pillar on this side is gone. If we now, but we can still see all of the shed. We're now at 48, I was just doing it manually, so I, I hope to get 50, I've got 48. The shed is now disappearing. Uh, max is in the same place, you can just see his hands in the frame here and his head is kind of staying in the same place. We've now gone up to uh, 70 we can still just see his hands his head's kind of in the same place but we're now losing the whole of the front of the shed and we're starting to lose some of the trampoline and as we go through that background is just getting closer and closer and closer and you know we go to the last one he hasn't moved I've moved I've adjusted the difference between 400 oh what did I just do 
nothing. The difference between 400 here and 24 here, it's just unbelievable. Now he is in the same place, but look at the difference in the background. Again, we're at the same aperture all the way through. We stayed at f11. Um, I had to go, uh, I had to change things as I went up because, and the ISO, I changed the shutter speed in the ISO because I put on the 400 mil and at 400 mil, I wanted to get um, at least a 400 shutter speed, um, which is what you're supposed to do by the way, shutter speed higher at least the same, if not higher than your focal length. Uh, um, and look, he hasn't moved, I promise you, he has not moved, but look at the difference. All I've done is gone back and it is just a massive difference. So like I said, there is a math mathematical um, equation behind that, but if I was photographing things for a client and I wanted to give them a nice picture in perhaps not great surroundings, I would try and get something like this, but at 2.8. Um, so I'd probably use a 200 mil lens, 70 to 200, f 2.8, and soften the background. Obviously it's a horrible background anyway, because we're in a garden, um, but I wanted to have a lot of busyness in the background so we could see that background come closer and closer and closer. So I wouldn't put a client in this position anyway. Um, but to prove a point there, if you had a busy background, then you could, without moving them, get two very, very different photos. Or even if you didn't have a, but even if it wasn't a horrible background, if you had a lake, a lake over here somewhere, they're standing by a bush. Um, you could get two pictures without even moving them. There's one with a nice lake or a mountain or something in the background. They stay where they are. You move back you've lost the lake, you've lost the mountain, and now you've got a nice bush or a nice decorative wall or whatever you've, you're shooting in, whatever environment you're shooting in. Um, and it just goes to show that without the person moving, what two different shots you can actually get, uh, which I think is um, quite remarkable. Yeah. So there we go. Um, I'm going to put the um, lens one up in a little bit more detail at the end so you can see it scroll through. So have a look at that, that's going to come up now. Going through now from 24 all the way up until 263. And now, there we are, that is it. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, I hope that was useful. Um, so it does make a difference whether you shoot at 24 or 200 or 400 or whatever lens you've got. Uh, so just make sure that next time you're out there, give that some thought and you know, get a couple of different photos with the client in the same place. You move around and it's amazing how many different photos you could muster from just changing your lens really and your focal length. Yeah, so that's it, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for watching, um, I hope that was useful. Do not forget to drop me any comments if there's any questions or if you want to correct anything for me, I'll be happy to learn some more. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye.